This isn't a two hour review, a let's play of What Remains of Edith Finch follows the two minute review, timestamped in the description. Giant Sparrow have poured a lot of love and effort into this small but intricately detailed world that has been inhabited by an array of distinct, charming, and ultimately tragic characters. The private narratives of these characters are stepped into by the player and are presented in a dizzying variety of ways. The art direction throughout is beautiful, at once diverse and consistent. The attractive, somewhat magical and poignant assortment of narrative communication methods is the bloodline of the game, blurring the fact that to my mind there isn't quite enough interactivity to make the argument that what remains of Edith Finch needed to be a game, rather than say a film. Where this varies from something like Gone Home is that in Gone Home it is up to Katie, the player, to seek out, discover and in some small way investigate the narrative, while the player character in what remains of Edith Finch, usually Edith, tells us what the narrative is as we are toured around the house, the game wrestling control of our viewpoint to centre on her floating text, rather than leaving us to discern a story for ourselves from the stunning environment they've created. The cleverly designed map is hand-holdingly linear, often necessary for a tight story, like the one they've intended. The game lights up key objects with flares to show that a click there is going to advance the narrative. This slightly undermines the objects in the game that lack these indicators, revealing them to be technically irrelevant. Though every detail in the game is worth looking at. Being told by Edith Finch as she walks around the house, slowly to avoid triggered dialogues from over overlapping. How she's feeling and what she's thinking lends a degree of separation between player and player character, somehow diminishing whatever it is that the player might be feeling. It feels like it falls into the show don't tell trap while at the same time having more than enough showing going on. I suppose being told how I feel sort of makes me feel uninvolved and unimportant. I just nod along, yes that is how I feel, thank you for telling me what to think. Perhaps they could have had more confidence in their visual and interactive storytelling and in the player and dispensed with some of the triggered dialogues. The result is a tight semi-interactive experience that lasts a shade less than two hours, and it's quite lovely overall, with several especially memorable and magical moments. It's totally grim, mind, thoroughly depressing in tone, the main theme being the world is full of love and beauty and creativity, and it's all going to die. I award What Remains of Edith Finch a poignant, heart-wrenching demise and some buckets of tears. <laughs> you feel sad now, by the way. Feel sad. This is What Remains of Edith Finch. It It makes sense as a first Let's Play, I'm sure lots of people have done this, because it's kind of like a film. I think it just about has enough interactivity to be perfectly valid as a game. I mean. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning, with the house. So, I think I'm reading someone else's book. I'm now... I'm now the person... Someone had put up a chain-link fence, but it looked like I wasn't the first person to hop it. My brother Milton disappeared when I was four. It was like the house just swallowed him up. So someone else is reading a book narrated by the player character. I'm the player character, apparently. No, I'm not. I'm controlling her. It's a very pretty game. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. But it's kind of... linear. It's a very controlled narrative. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. It's a pretty game. In her will, my mother left me a key but didn't tell me what I'd unlocked. When writing appears, it... Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought the mystery would be enough to bring me back. When words appear, it wrestles contro camera control from the player. So your head swings to where it is. Without your permission. No one had driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few have prints. Dialogue is slightly different if you go down the bottom path reflecting on the forest instead of 
the road. I've played through a lot of this before because I don't know how to set up Let's Plays, so I got all the audio wrong, and I had no audio for the game, and later on I just... Even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. It's a very knowledgeable house. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. I am. F I like this game, but it's on the cusp of being. of not really making enough use of the medium it's on. It could almost equally have been a very good film, or a decent film, kind of a Wes Anderson kind of a thing. I asked Edie once about the dragon in the pond. She said it had killed her husband. But yeah, I've played through a bunch of this because I didn't record get audio for the game. I hope it's child, working this time. The house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Not sure I'm going to play through this again afterwards. If I haven't got the audio right. I, I could check, but I like to live like now, on the edge. Now, as a 17 year old, I knew exactly what those words were. I, I was, was afraid, afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. The environments are really nice. I mean, so it's, it's a small world they've created, but it's got such detail to it. Um, you'll see inside it feels really lived in. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. Yeah. The lighting and environments are really pretty. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how only one restaurant would deliver to our house, so we had Chinese a lot. Or how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. You the table can't... was still a wreck from the night we left. You can't run in this because it has to control your pace so that dialogues don't overlap, I expect. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. Right clicking zooms in. And so does holding shift. It doesn't actually make you run faster. Or run. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. Oh. Yeah, of course, if you're going to have a, a game in a house and you're going to make it linear, it's useful to be able to have... Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. It's useful to have the narrative explain that all the doors are sealed shut. Um, we'll get to those doors. Except we'll get through the peepholes. Didn't do that last time. Hmm. 
My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. That's sad. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Yeah, nope. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was ten and she was painting my portrait. This house is so lived in. It's had love and memories and hopes and dreams of a huge family poured into it. It's a bit scary. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. That would be a problem. Mm. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I like this room. Isn't it pretty? I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. I wouldn't seal it up. It's a nice room. We the train and some fish. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out. My mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. You have to move the mouse to interact with things. It's not always clear where you're supposed to move the mouse, but... Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. It's usually just moving it somewhere. You'll find something that works. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the people. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. I almost overlapped some dialogue there. Call of the Wild. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. The game finds interesting ways of December telling. December 15th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. Yeah, the game has creative ways of telling the stories of each of these family members, and, and you can kind of step into their narratives and learn their story. It's pretty neat and my Halloween candy was all gone some of it is kind of passive mom can I come out now sweetheart it's late go to sleep sometimes you want more player involvement more involvement for you the gerbil food was dry but I didn't mind it mm -hmm. But it keeps things different enough and the pace is okay. Um, I kept eating and eating. Apparently I've eaten the toothpaste container as well. I ate a lot of things that night. <laughs> Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, yeah. I was a cat. A lot of the stories are kind of implausible. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. I kind of like the cat mechanics. You hold the mouse button to kind of not charge your jump, but you do that cat butt wiggle that they do before they jump when they're sizing something up. You know the wiggle.
Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. They're not even moving at all. Really nice environments in this in this game. It's, it's really beautifully done. Again, small world, but um, quality of a quantity any day. Nom, 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 nom. Come here, birdie. I jumped and I almost got her. Butt wiggle. Butt wiggle jump. Butt wiggle jump. I could tell she was getting really tired. <laughs> now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. Because I'm hungry. That's what happens when you send children to dinner. Send children away without dinner. I gobbled her up. Nom 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 nom. They turn into cats. And then... Suddenly, I was owls. an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. This is all very plausible. I'm hunting rabbits now. That is the aim. A lot of the narrative... And segments kind of have mini games. I guess. Rabbits. Rabbits. Mm -hmm. I imagined his face looking up and seeing mine through my talons. And the cat segment is one you've seen in the trailers. And I didn't chew one bit. It's a, a strong mm -hmm. opening narrative to, to play. And the longest one, I think. Mama Rabbit! Mama Rabbit. She was almost too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. But suddenly, I was a shark! and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. I wanted fat, juicy seals. I tore off her flipper and it tasted really good. Oh, my God. 
detail at least. started growling and suddenly I was me again I held my breath for a long time but I couldn't hear anything I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep but it's not going to wait much longer it needs to be and we both know I will be delicious something under the bed is drooling This game has a lot of dead children in it. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six children, sixteen or younger, that died, I think. Um, but yeah, the, the, the aim is to go around the house discovering the little nuggets of memory of final memories of each of these family members for answers not sure who's asking presumably the girl reading this journal of the character I'm now playing unless I'm reading my own journal This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Her room was like a museum. Oh dear. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune. And misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse. His wife, Ingeborg, and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. This is another inventive way to... But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. To show the story, but it's passive. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. And quick as that, I get another entry. Think Molly Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Hmm. I'm not sure who the leaves are. Sanjay K. Sven Ingeborg. 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 Parks and Craig, Margaret Atwood. Hardy boys. 
Edie knit me a new pair of gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. Louis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Edie gave a big interview about a mole man living under the Finch house. My mom was furious. I hadn't thought of myself as Edith Jr. for a long, long time. There's a lot Edie of... told people Sven was killed by a dragon. She could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. One summer, they evacuated the island, but Edie refused to go. For a few weeks, she was a celebrity. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. There's a lot of good showing the atmosphere, the detail of everything. Kind of should tell the story by itself. I feel like I'm being told too much by the narrator, who is me. It doesn't detract, it, it just rises a. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. It was a pretty big trace. It was a pretty big trace. Because me walking around knows this story for the most part. What are we doing now? Yeah. But obviously the player doesn't know the story. So it's a kind of degree of separation uh, between me and the player character. So it There's a secret in this bathroom. It's just a little barrier to immersion. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. These rooms are f brimming with character, and our direction's fantastic. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin. And consistent throughout. It's really polished stuff. And that he never talked about him. And obviously it's a... I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. It's a narrow but tight brief they've written themselves. Really well How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Fink. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom, and he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore he'd never be afraid again, and he wasn't. Less I think Calvin always wanted to fly. But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. We don't get seasick. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Motion sick. Alvin, I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. And maybe he'd still be here, but I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother.
the day he made up his mind to fly. And he did. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. It's late, I think. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. Looks like she was. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Sixteen candles. That's when she died. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Oh, Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her screen. Now at 16, she was all washed up has been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <coughs> Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan, Ed current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was cancelled. <laughs> Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing workers' islands tonight. I don't need to do anything. Tonight. This is all Police perfectly passive. To... It's a concern. That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. You see this It'll music be box at the beginning, but I, I walked past it. Twenty minutes later, That's a clue, then. Rick hadn't returned. The key in the music so box. Barbara went to look for him. Right on cue. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, no, it's she listened for Rick. It's going to comic cam. She found Rick's crutch and 
and imagine the worst. The gang's leader is the infamous Hookman Killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family ten years ago tonight. For me. Barb, relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act Bad furious. Boyfriend. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you She threw him out. But she kept the little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep. Watching the late, late picture show. Hours later. Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up. But if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. Yeah, I'll watch this again. Describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. Oh no! I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. Mm. He was quite smashing. <laughs> <Didn't do anything. laughs> monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. This is when she died, but I was not find myself. out how she actually died.
She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter? Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. It's an eerie tale. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. See, I've played this bit before. <laughs> The audio's working this time. Because that that felt mostly passive. Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered. As absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. The way all the... I guess now I know why Mom doesn't like me playing with the music box. Yeah, that's a hint. Time to go to the basement. And this way is locked. Everywhere. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. I'm sure a secret passage leads there. Anyway, so I just ran upstairs last time. I walked past this. Such detailed Mom's work in the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. So he buried himself down here. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Sad. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. In grief. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today, I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just stopped. Again, how much would be lost if this was just a cutscene? Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe you got tired of waiting. I still think it's nice. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. 
but once you've seen the story, it's not fun to play. So there's no reason it's to go through it again, really. The longest in 30 years. Except I'm done waiting. Play. I have to leave while well, I still can. I'm not even climbing the stairs, he's doing that for me. Ladder, I should say. I know it's out there, somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara. And Molly. And Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day. Even if it kills me. Now, I figure it wants me to go that way. What's this way? It's just darkness, okay. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. Just keeping the I'm pace going to appreciate now. all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left. Or a month. Or a single week. I'd be happy with one new day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Lots of sad stories. Walter died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. That's a weird thing. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I, I thought really it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse we made it real. It's the old house, Odin's house. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history you're a part of. Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. And when 
can look at the house. That history of imagination and stubbornness and madness. Any of it seems possible. Interactivity. I think we've been surrounded by death for so long we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but the pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Three of the gerbils were mine. Two had been my fault. Derpy, derpy, burpy, chirpy, furpy, lurpy, zerpy. Coco. My mother has a cat of called Coco, who is alive. Good name for a dog. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. Kitty Angel. Space Traveler. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. I think it's a really clever. She could map. see it poking oh. out of the water at low tide. Everything ties together in a really neat linear path, but it does feel. Linear. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. <clears throat> I can't move the telescope, I need to look at anything else. It does pixels in the distance. No pixels. He's a dude. Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Uh, so Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday. And find everything out for myself. I'm nearly up to where I was. At least. But looking back on it now... If she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Okay. So is the person reading this journal my daughter? That I'm explaining this to? I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. <laughs> Rawr.
Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's going to rain the whole weekend, isn't it? I will never forget this weekend, Dad. Okay, got it. I'm going to take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hmm. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. Nothing quite like being outside. Again, it's not I'm a just saying, way of telling I'm not always going to be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth... Dad! Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad, I... I... Just breathe. Turn off your... Sorry, I interrupted that dialogue. Let me get behind you. Nice do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive, you need to be strong. Great shot, Don! <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? <laughs> It's twitching. I think That's it's totally still... normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about. Dad. Ah! Sad. Such a tragic family. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. You don't know it. You haven't seen it. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but Mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. The light tells me that's where I'm going next. What we also see here? Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. all the various ways the narratives are told and the atmosphere is wonderful bit too much being told what's going on not leaving me after to Sam died my mom and Edie got really close they'd both lost a lot because I know I'm going to be spoon fed the, th the story I don't feel that invested in investigating I guess or just walking around I know a glowing light will alert me when there's anything worth looking at, I guess. But it's all worth looking at. It, it does a good job of showing. Showing the story. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. I like that the music stops when you stop moving.
Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. Catch the dogs. Sad to describe the death of a one year old. And there's the culprit, there's the whale that killed him. <laughs> Gregory and his father. Who's left? Gus, Dawn, Milton, Lewis, and E.D. Murder a whale. Or the frog. Where's the frog? It's in the bathroom, wasn't it? Bastard frog. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her. We don't need a stepmom, were the words that I, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may just cry. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. Huh. The wind picked up panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Artistically, this game is really beautiful. <laughs> the 
Rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent or that of three women. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. It's one more for the book. She never now. talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, <laughs> they were going to name me Gus. Okay, I have finally arrived at the, at where I left off last time, and I didn't record properly, so I'll be back for the le rest of this. Um, until then, thank you for watching. If you've hung around this long, I'd be surprised. Thank you. Um, bye bye. I think what I'm going to do is put all this Let's Play footage after my review of the game. I know that's not optimized for YouTube, but it's how I want to do it, and I think that's the main thing. And it's convenient as well, I don't want a whole, no whole lot of videos pertaining to the same game. Anyway, so I haven't played this bit before. Where am I going? So I don't know where I'm going. So this is going to be dawdling and... <laughs> My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. I don't need to press anything to climb. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. Sandra. She spent a summer building houses in Kolkata, where she met my dad, Sanjay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Can't jump good. Nope. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. and to see kids in the house again. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good, almost normal. gave him a castle. Expect him to go up here later. So yeah. It's wanting me to go this way, I think. Slowly. Oh, 
not that very convenient. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Is it a flip book? There's a lot of pages in this book. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. And then this way. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Uh, that's ups. Ah. Okay. So, climbing. very tired today. I had like three hours sleep because of life things. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Oh. I didn't mean to go forward, I just looked at it. Chaos fractals and legalized marijuana. I agree. Yeah, it's nice. In moderation. Stay safe, etc. Dear Mrs. Finch. As Lewis's psychiatrist, I Story. can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. <laughs> he kept working at the cannery, yeah. but he withdrew part of himself. 
in our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Wonder? What do I do? Wonder. Oh. Okay, and I'm controlling two things at once. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. And a fish. Imagine a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats and toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. Oh. Sorry. Fish. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Asymmetric dungeon crawling. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. People can daydream. Like a whole new Lewis. Let them. So I let him go on. Jobs are boring. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Mm. Then he made musicians. <laughs> and songs for them to play. about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew strong. Turn on the volume. He no longer spoke at the cannery. his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination, so he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. The art direction is fantastic in this game. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. It is varied but consistent in its New Lewis presentation. Fish. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Mm -hmm. 
Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a Handsome queen. Sorry, I made him strip for this. The queen was on her own quest for... Uh, Radiant rainbows. He could be bad. the sound of her electric sitar. sitar his chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. The game's getting he was more so and more proud of having created it. His imagination's getting a lot more detailed. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. That is problematic. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Mm. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. You're not doing it right. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. <laughs> Alice would be packed with his companions. Including the wise calico pudding. 
insisted on inviting her. Mrs. Finch, your son, was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. <sighs> My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Dawn and Edie remaining. No, the store is not sealed. Exactly. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. This is my room, but this. There's one, two. Two characters left still. Did I miss a room? I must have... I must have ED. Huh. Where was ED? That whole last day, ED just watched his pack and didn't say a word. <clears throat> Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. 
or that Edie had a key to it. Careful the candle. Sort out your books. Oh, goodness me, they're everywhere. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay? Okay, so this will be easy, I guess. <clears throat> Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you. There's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. Ah. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. Hmm. God, it smelled awful. Hmm. You no, know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. No, straight ahead. Just don't turn. I got turned around. Oh. Well, this is... For a while, I wandered. I don't think it matters which way I go. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt <coughs> like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. No. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, and she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. <laughs> it's made of letters. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. The rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. I found out about you. 
I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Oh dear. Yeah, it's very nice. Only a couple of hours long, but very um, compact, I suppose. A lot of effort's gone into every minute of, of playtime. <laughs> it's a good game. the developers as children. That's very nice. Really sad. Kind of thoroughly depressing throughout. But poignant in a, in a good way. Very polished experience. Hmm. If there's nothing at the nothing at the end of this, I'll probably just cut this bit. But. Eh, if you're here for this long, I suppose it doesn't matter. I like the variety of ways in which the stories were told, but a lot of them weren't. I don't know, maybe it was fine. Um, I think. One can get hung up on how interactive how interactive an experience is. Slightly weird looking baby. Intense eyes. It was interactive, it was It worked, but it equally it would have worked as a film. Um, which you can't say for most games. Gameplay in general, not a huge factor here, but everything else is very strong. I mean, I guess uh, one could have maybe raised these issues with Soma, but with that there was far less... 
because the player character was discovering things for the first time and there wasn't an ongoing narrative being read to you from a single source. It didn't it felt like it was doing more showing than, than telling. Yeah, this could have been a, a book or a film, but in, in any medium it's 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 well done. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve people. A lot of work. And there's Edie and Don. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um. I'm not sure to what degree I'd recommend buying the game now that you've seen this. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I will see you when I next think of something else that I might play on this in this format. Bye bye.